11th Lecture on Church History In our last lecture, we studied Medieval Church History Part 3 Modern Church History Chapter 1 The Age of the Reformation The period is from 1517 to 1648 Number 1 Introduction 1. The Need for the Reformation the medieval church had become corrupt. Church offices were sold, and high-ranked clergymen lived immoral lives. The church became secularized, and it lost its authority to the cause of the Reformation. The Church's corruption is what caused the Reformation. Also, because Church officers were corrupt, humanism emerged. There were several reformers before the Reformation happened. John Wycliffe and John Huss greatly influenced the Reformation. Pope Leo X sold indulgences. Martin Luther, who was opposed to this practice, rose up against it. Number 3. The Shape of the Reformation Number 1. The Lutherans The Lutherans reformed Germany and Northeast Europe. Number the Zwinglians The Zwinglians focused on reforming Zurich, Switzerland, and their reform activities were focused in southern Germany. Number three, the Calvinists. Calvin focused on reforming Geneva, Switzerland, and he also focused his reform activities in France, Scotland, and the Netherlands. Number four, the English reformers. Their reformation was focused on people who spoke English. Number five, the Anabaptists. The Anabaptists reformed most of the region of West Europe. Numbers 1 to 5 listed here opposed Catholicism. Number 6. The Jesuits. The Jesuits were centered on Catholicism, advocating reflection and reform within Catholicism. This was the Counter-Reformation. Number four, the successes and failures of reform. We can say that there are two regions 
a region in which reform was successful and a region in which it failed. Reformation The Reformation was successful in North Europe and regions outside of Rome. However, reform didn't happen in Rome where the Latin people dominated or in Southern Europe. The forms of church government. Number one, the Lutherans. The Lutherans did not have a finalized form of church government. Number two, the Calvinists. The Calvinists had a Presbyterian church government. Number three, the Anglican Church. The Anglican Church had a form of government that was like that of the Roman Catholic Church. Number four, the Anabaptists. The Anabaptists had a Baptist congregational government. Number six, theological ideas. Some aspects of the reformers' theology were identical to those of Roman Catholicism. Catholicism and Protestantism shared the theological idea of the doctrines of God, Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the Trinity. Apart from these things, they had many different theological beliefs. Their church governments were different. Their views of the Bible were different, and their views of salvation and the afterlife were different. Protestantism rejected church tradition and the Apocrypha while only accepting canon. Protestantism denied the fact that salvation denied the idea that salvation lies only within the church. It also rejected the idea of purposes and transubstantiation. Luther and Zwingli were pioneers of the Reformation. Calvin and Melanchthon organized the church. Number seven, Protestant worship rituals. The Protestants gave sermons in the language spoken in the region. They were different from the Catholics who preached in Latin. The practice of educating believers was restored. They abolished mass and the burning of incense. Furthermore, Protestantism abolished the worship of saints, the worship of relics, prayer for the dead, 
and pilgrimages to land. Number eight, the pros and cons of the Reformation. A, the pros of the Reformation. The Bible became the basis for thought. Worship, which had become idolized and ritualized in the Middle Ages, reverted to a biblical basis. People found freedom in their personal faith. People were guided on how they were to interpret the Bible, and they were taught how to have direct fellowship with God. The Roman Catholic Church also did have a reform movement within itself. A. The Cons B. The Reformation Protestantism was divided into various denominations. War also happened. Many people died and they experienced economic failure. Number 9. The Effects of the Reformation on the Economy First, feudalism collapsed and the middle class rose up. Second, common knowledge became more advanced, which led to improvements in culture. Third, individualism saw a revival, and this was the beginning of the formation of a capitalist society. Fourth, various industries developed. Number two, Martin Luther, the Reformation. Number one, Luther's life. Martin Luther was born on November 10, 1483, in Eisleben, Germany. His father was a miner, and his mother was a devout believer. When he was 19, he entered the University of Erfurt, where he majored in scholasticism and Latin literature. While he was majoring in law, he entered the Augustine Monastery. He later served as professor of logic and humanities, and he later became a professor of theology. In 1511, he left behind his calling as monk and traveled to Rome, where he learned about in 1512, he was awarded his Doctor of Theology. In 1525, Martin Luther married Katharina von Bora, who was a nun. He died on February 18, 1546. Number 2. 
Luther's reform work? A. How it started. Pope Leo X sold indulgences, and Martin Luther, who was opposed to this practice, attacked him with the 95 Theses on October 31, 1517. The Roman Catholic Church sent him a letter of excommunication because a man named John Eck had quickly did behavior the letter was immediately sent out if we look at the letter it says that all of Luther's writings must be burned. An order was made to arrest Luther and his followers if he did not repent within 60 days. On December 10, 1520, at the university, Luther in the presence of the professors and students, burned the letter. B. The 95 Theses Let us look at the important details. Number 1. Indulgences cannot cancel the penalties of God. They cancel the condemnation of <coughs> they only cancel the condemnation of the church. Number two indulgences cannot forgive someone of their sins. Number three, indulgences cannot eliminate the penalties a sinner ought to receive from God. Number four, indulgences cannot do anything for the souls in purgatory. Number five, a believer who has repented of their sins has already been forgiven of their sins by God and indulgences are useless. The common person cannot understand what good works, merits, and treasures are but the treasure is the gospel and grace of God. The Pope does not have the right to sell the merits of Jesus Christ or the merits of believers, but he only has the right to cancel condemnation. Let us analyze the details. Theses 1 to 7 are the introduction. Theses 8 to 29 address the issue of pardoning the sins of those in purgatory. Theses 30 to 80 are about the pardoning of sins of those who are alive. Theses 81 to 91 are about being opposed 
to indulgences as a layperson. Theses 92 to 95 point out the wrong mode for selling indulgences. Number three, Luther's ideas and writings. A. Ideological background. At the University of Erfurt, Martin Luther studied scholasticism and Latin classics. There was a man by the name of Stalpitz, who was abbot of the monastery of Augustine, and this person influenced Martin Luther to work hard in studying the Bible. Stalpitz introduced to Luther Augustine's grace theology. Luther learned the idea of being made righteous by faith. William Ockham is another figure for Luther's ideological background. Ideas had a large impact on Luther's theology. The mystics also were a part of Luther's ideological background. He learned about experiential faith from mystics such as Eckert and Thaler. By studying the Bible, Luther came to believe that the Bible which is God's word, is the standard for everything. B. Luther's Ideas Luther searched for an experiential and practical religion. Concerning communion, he believed in consubstantiation. He has three claims. First, he believed in the truth that one is made righteous by f Second, he believed in the priesthood of believers. This means that all believers are priests. Third, he strongly believed in the Bible's authority. C. Luther's views on salvation. Luther said that salvation comes only from God. Of course, this is a truth that is found in God's word. He also said, Salvation comes only by faith. He said, Salvation is a new relationship with God that is fulfilled in Christ. He further said, Man cannot be saved by good works. D. Luther's views on the church. Luther divided into the invisible church and the visible church. Roman Catholicism did not make this distinction, but it saw it as one church. 
Luther divided the church into two. He also said, The Holy Spirit brings the believer to church and protects the believer. He said, The Holy Church is the fellowship of all believers who believe in Christ. Luther said, If God's word is spread, and if the sacraments are properly carried out, then God's church can be established. He said, God rules over the church with his right hand, and he rules over the nation with it. Luther's Views on the State Luther made the distinction between church and state, but that does not mean he denied the sovereignty of the state. He said, All believers are, in principle, righteous, but they must be ruled by the state because they are, in reality, sinners. He said, Believers cannot submit to the state's authority when their religious lives are persecuted. He said, he also said, Believers may seek asylum when they are persecuted, but they must not use revolutionary means. Christian leaders may criticize rulers and give advice to them when they He claimed that the church must be protected from the interference of the state. For this reason, he left the church's administrative power to the state. Because the state ruled over the church, the rights of the church and the rights of the world were mixed up. As a result, the church became spiritually weaker. F. Luther's Writings in May 1520, he wrote a book called On Good Works. In this book, he said, Good works only happen in faith. In August of 1520, he wrote a book called To the Christian Nobility of the German nation. In this book, he attacked the corruption of the papacy. He said the following themes. First, he was opposed to the idea of the Pope's temporal power. Second, he was opposed to the idea that only the Pope can interpret the Bible. Third, he was opposed to the fact that only the Pope could call a council. In October of 1520, Martin Luther wrote a book titled The Babylonian Captivity of the church. Here he said, 
all believers are priests, and communion, baptism, and penance are the only sacraments. In December of 1520, he wrote concerning Christian liberty. In this, based on Romans, that people are made righteous by faith. Number four, Luther and the Diet of Worms. The Diet of Worms was convened in Worms on January twenty-seven, fifteen twenty-one. By Karl the Fifth. The subject at hand was how they were to deal with Martin Luther. The Pope sent an envoy, Alexander, to the assembly. Luther participated in this diet. Karl the Fifth summoned Luther, guaranteeing his safety. Luther, prepared to die, left for the Diet on March twenty-six, fifteen, twenty-one. Even should he said, even should there be as many devils. As time on the housetops, still I would enter it. On his way to the diet, many crowds saw him off. Before go, going before the diet, Luther sang the hymn that he wrote and composed, Ein Fest Berg. He was interrogated by the Diet on April seventeen. The first question the assembly asked Luther was, "Did you write the twenty-five books?" To this, Luther answered, "Yes." Then the assembly asked him. Would you retract the things you wrote in the books? To this, Luther replied, "Unless it is proven that these books go against what the Bible says, then I will not retract anything. My to the word of God." I cannot recant anything. The emperor issued the following order: Luther is a sinner. Whoever meets with him will be punished. Luther's writings are forbidden. On April twenty-six, Luther returned home. In order to save Luther's life, Frederick, the Prince Elector of Saxony, kidnapped him and took him to the Wartburg Castle. There, Luther translated the Bible to German. He began translating the Bible in November, fifteen twenty-one. And completed the translation in 1522. The Bible was published in September of that year. Number three, the German Reformation. Number one, Thun. He was born in 1497. And died in fifteen sixty. 
from the age of 21, he served as language professor at a university. He taught Hebrew and Greek. He had a meek personality and was not only humble, but he was also a man of integrity who was the revolutionary Luther's one and only partner. He wrote Loci Communis Rerum Theologicarum. Let us take a look at what the book says. It says that authority lies in the Bible. He said, faith is being certain that Jesus died for our sins. He said, the only sacraments are baptism and communion. Number two, the two forms of the German Reformation. A. The Moderates. Erasmus is a key figure of the Moderates. Erasmus criticized Luther's Reformation for being too aggressive. Let us summarize Erasmus' life. He was born in the Netherlands. He studied at the University of Paris and the University of Oxford. Erasmus was a humanist and a master of classical literature. He revised the New Testament to Greek and he wrote Encomium Moriae. He criticized the corrupt Roman Catholic Church in this book. After 1513, he lived in Germany and took part in. He exposed the flaws of scholastic theology. Doing so, he also criticized the corruption of church officers of the time. Because of his Greek and Pelagian tendencies, <coughs> Erasmus did not understand the true meaning of the gospel. Instead of relying on God's power, he tried to use human power for reform. He died in Basel in 1536. B. The Extremists 1. Karlstad Karlstad was born in 1480 and died in 1541. He said that to have idol icons in the church is to violate the first of the Ten Commandments. He said clergy should marry as well. He said that they should forbid the use of music and instruments in worship. He also said that everyone should become farmers, that there is no need to educate and no need to study. He also said that the Lord's second coming is near, that the end of the world is near. He was against infant baptism. Number two, Thomas Munzer. 
Thomas Munzer was born in 1490 and died in 1525. He was a German radical religious person. He himself said that he is a prophet who received the Holy Spirit's revelation. He disapproved of the Bible and church positions. He was opposed to infant Munzer emphasized that the end of the world was near. He claimed that society's organization needed to be completely remodeled. He denied government and scholarship. He started the Peasants' Revolt, and when the revolt was quelled, he was arrested and executed. In this way, while Thomas Munzer and Karlstad had their aggressive movements, Luther visited Wartburg in March of 1522. He preached there for eight days, put an end to the confusion, and completely restored order. This is because he rejected extremism. Many monks and regular nobles supported him. Number 3. Division the Volt happened. In 1524, the nobles quelled the peasants' revolt with force. This resulted in 150,000 people being killed. Because Luther cooperated in suppressing the peasants' revolt, people had the misconception that he sided with the nobles. Number 2. Erasmus Divis Division Erasmus, who had moderate ideas, emphasized free will. He spoke his opinions that were in disagreement with Luther, who was Bible-centered. Number 3. Luther's Marriage When Martin Luther married Katharina von Bora, the nun who came from nobility, many people ridiculed him. Numbers Persecution and Petition A. In 1526, the Diet of Spire was called. It said, Princes may choose their faith within the limits of being able to answer to the Pope and the Emperor. B. The Diet was convened again in 1529. If a prince were Catholic, then the prince, then the people who lived in the prince's state were to be Catholics as well. They were forbidden from propagating Protestantism in those places. On the other hand, a law was passed that if a prince were Protestant, then the people living in the state could freely practice Catholicism. A law said that taxes that had been in since the were to be collected as 
they always had been. C. Protestants protested against this on April 19, 1529. The Protestants submitted a letter of protest. Five princes and 14 cities took part in these events. This concludes the 11th lecture on church history. Thank you.